Hello everybody, Rogue Fox here, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition Redstone Tutorial. And in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create an XP Storage Furnace Array. Now what we have here is the XP Storage Furnace Array. So this is great if you have some sort of big farm. For example, if you have a kelp farm, you can have an array of smokers that will also work for this design, or it will also work for your regular furnaces. But in this demonstration, I will be using the Blast Furnace, but just so you know, we can use all three of the furnaces for this design. To demonstrate this build, what I have up top is a chest minecart full of iron ore. So if we take a look inside, I have nine stacks of iron ore, and this is going to be evenly distributed between the three furnaces here, giving each furnace a total of three stacks. So let's go ahead and flip it. Now, you will hear a bunch of noise right now, and that is completely normal. So what is going on? We have this trying to fill up to 64, but in the meantime, we have all of our iron ore going down into our collection system, so you can see it passing through and going down below here. So all of these are being collected by the furnaces. Now, this is still trying to fill up to 64, so let's take a look up here with the redstone. Because we have items just flowing through, because again, the furnace is trying to get to 64, this is going to keep flowing until the furnace down below is full. So once we get a full stack in the furnace, this is going to stop making noise, which should be in just a moment here. There we go. So you can hear everything has gone quiet except for this furnace here because it is still trying to fill up it seems. But now all of these have filled up and again this is still going to fill up from the chest that we have here. The same rest of mechanics are going to apply to this design because this is activated, this comparator, this is going to allow our items to flow through. So again these are down below and just like in the other design that I showed you if we take these away. So let's go ahead we're going to shut this off real quick, just like this, push it off to the side. We're going to remove these stacks here. And again, this comparator is going to shut off, which means it's going to lock up the hopper down below. So as these are cooking, it's going to start storing all of these items. And once again, once we pull all of these items from these furnaces, we are going to get the XP from this whole stack that smelts and all of the stacks that smelted down below. All right, and the blast furnaces have finally shut off. Everything is done smelting, so we have our stacks that went down below, and we have the stacks ready to pull out for the XP. So notice that I don't have any levels right now. So again, as soon as we pull out this stack, we get all the XP for the iron that came through this smelter. So you can see I have nine levels there, and then we get the XP for all the items that came through here. 14, and then again, we pull this stack out and then we get all the XP for all the items that came through this furnace. So this is how this build works. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to make it. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started, I wanted to let you know that the rest zone is in fact one wide, but if we want even distribution throughout all of our furnaces, we do need to give each furnace a one block gap. So you need to place a furnace, place a block in between, and then place your next furnace and so on and so forth. That ensures that all of your items will be evenly distributed through all of your furnaces and will not get stuck going down into the collection system. To make the XP storage furnace array that I just demonstrated, you are going to need a 4x4 area. Now this 4x4 area is only going to cover these three modules that we made here and then our collection system at the end. As far as this rail and then the chest with the minecart go, this was just for demonstration only so this will not be a part of the supplies because this will be however you want to hook this up to whatever farm you have. So we're just going to focus on the furnace array itself. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies. There we go. There are all the supplies we'll need for today's build. And as I mentioned, we can make this build as big or as small as we'd like. So what I thought I would do is just give you the supplies for each module. So for each module, we are going to need two hoppers, a sticky piston, a redstone block, a comparator, a repeater, a couple of blocks, two stairs, and then you'll need your double chest at the end for your collection. And then of course this does apply to our smoker, our blast furnace, and then the furnace. With that being said, if you want to pause the video, go ahead and do that, grab your supplies, and then we'll jump right into the build. 
All right, so what we're gonna do first is place in the collection system. So come to the far right over here. We're gonna make a double chest like this. Go ahead and grab your hoppers and then crouch place hoppers running into that chest, a hopper running into that hopper, and then a hopper running into that one. Once you have that done, go ahead and grab your furnace, blast furnace or smoker. And for this one, I'll use a smoker. Place your smokers on top, just like that. Now, all we need to do is grab our hoppers once again, come up here and crouch place hoppers into the top of our smokers, furnaces, or blast furnaces. And there we go. That is the foundation of the build done. Now let's go ahead and start working on the redstone. For the redstone, the first thing we want to do is grab our repeaters. We swing around to the back side here, and then we're going to run these repeaters right into the back of these bottom hoppers like that. So after you have that done, place a block against the back of your smoker, your furnaces, or your blast furnaces like this, and we do that by crouch placing. That is done. Now go ahead and grab your comparators, and what we want to do is turn around this way and run our comparator out from each of these hoppers here. After you've done that, we want to run these comparators into blocks, so blocks like this. So right now, this should be your current setup. We have the comparator running out of the top hopper, going into a block, and then we also have these repeaters running down into our bottom hoppers. Now, what we're going to do is grab our sticky piston, and let's go ahead and knock these blocks out so we can get underneath. And under these blocks, go ahead and place your sticky pistons facing down. Now grab your redstone blocks and place redstone blocks on the faces of your sticky pistons. Now you will notice that all of these are going to turn on. So what this means right now, since this is being powered, this is going to lock up these hoppers, preventing anything from coming down. So at the moment, if we smelt a stack of kelp, let's say, all of this is going to get stored right here, and then we can just pull it out like a regular furnace. And of course, we are going to get the XP for that. To demonstrate the redstone mechanics behind this build, let's go ahead and place a stack of kelp inside the smoker. So the smoker is on, and notice nothing else is going on here. This repeater is still on, which is locking that hopper. And again, this is going to store all of our kelp up here. Now, as soon as we add another stack, let's go ahead and do that. Our comparator is going to turn on. That's going to power this piston, extending our redstone block down, turning off our repeater, which now means this hopper is unlocked. So all of our items are now going to pass through. So that's going to go through like that and go down into our collection system below. Now let's go ahead and say we run out of kelp up top. This is going to turn off. This piston is going to retract. And then this is going to make our redstone block activate this repeater once again, powering this hopper and locking it up. And that means this is going to be stored up top once again. And as I mentioned earlier, as soon as this stack is done, we can pull out this stack. We'll get the XP for this stack. And we'll also get all the XP for everything that has already passed through. Now that the redstone has been explained, we can go ahead and finish our build. So at this point, the build is pretty much done. All we need to do is decorate it. So go ahead and grab your stair blocks. We want to place our stair blocks down below just like this and also up top coming across the top. That way, all we see are our furnaces, our blast furnaces, or our smokers. Now, what I also chose to do was just make a wall like this, a block on this side, and then, of course, we do want an upside down stair right here so we can still access this chest. And there we go. That is everything all finished. And now, the only thing you need to do is hook this up to whatever farm you have. So again, if you have a kelp farm, you can hook all of this up to a kelp farm. This will all go down and whatever collection system you have in place, you can run that over into the furnace array here. So again, for the example, I just use these powered rails here with a chest with a minecart like that that was evenly distributing everything. You can do that. Or of course, you can use whatever system you'd like. One thing that I have noticed while testing this out is I'm not sure if it's the timing of Bedrock Edition, but there is uneven distribution of items so everything is still going to smelt we are going to get the xp for everything but if we take a look down below because this middle one has shut off that means that this is now locked once again all of the items coming from the left side of this furnace are now going to be stuck in this hopper here until it opens up once again so to fix that we can run hoppers underneath going into a separate chest 
or I haven't tried it just yet, but if we give them a block gap in between each furnace, that may help with even distribution. And I just confirmed that giving it a one block gap in between furnaces does in fact evenly distribute all of the items within the furnaces. So if we take a look in the backside now, everything is now lit. Everything has the same amount of items. So I wanna throw that out there and I'll probably put a disclaimer in the beginning of the video, but yeah, having a one block gap in between each furnace evenly distributes all of your items. Other than that, you have yourself an XP storage furnace array. And once again, as you saw, as soon as all of this is done smelting, we are gonna get the XP for all the items that smelted and all the items that have passed through and have gone down into our collection system. So with that being said, everyone, this is the end of today's tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I'm out. I'll see you later.